Greetings and welcome to Outlaws to the End. This is the official podcast of OutlawGamers.com, and we are your biannual hosts, Mr. Lauren Baumgarten, <laughs> and I am Mr. Brent Adams. Welcome to you, Lauren. Welcome to everybody. We're back. <laughs> Actually, I don't know that we got two shows. I don't know that we can call ourselves biannual because I'm almost positive we only did E3 last year. Or did we do one no. really early last year? I can't remember I, now. I think we might have done one. Uh, I think we might have done one early on in the year. Yeah. Okay. I hope. Yeah. Maybe like a looking forward to in 2017. I think we. I think. I, well, when was our last episode of uh, officially our last episode of Outlaw Gamer Radio? Uh, man, you're asking me to remember back more than about a month, and I tell you that's that's challenging these days. That no no because there's a lot uh, going on. I, I, look, looking back at our notes, it looks like episode seven, whatever episode that was. Yeah, we did on the fifteenth of February of twenty seventeen. Okay, well there you go, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, you know what? That was our division post mortem. Ooh, right, 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 yeah. right. Which the, yeah. the episode no one wanted to hear, but we did uh, anyway. <laughs> that's right. Well, that does not describe about <laughs> at least fifty of the hundred and fifty <laughs> episodes we did. You do a show every week. They can't all be money. Um, that's right. But uh, we're hoping that this show is money, and uh, we definitely want to thank all of you for joining us. We know we've been away a long time, and uh, yeah, hopefully we won't go six months again. No, hopefully not. There's been a lot going on in gaming, though, as many of you know. Uh, if you've been following the news, there's been all kinds of interesting, interesting business shenanigan type stuff going on in gaming. There's been all sorts of surprising, uh, popular games breaking out in gaming. There's uh, there's been surprising uh, game consoles that have uh, that have come out and have really hit big, and we're gonna try to talk about uh, we're gonna try to talk a little bit about a lot of it because there's a lot to talk about. So, Lauren, I guess the easiest place to start with is just kind of what we've been playing. Uh, as usual, your list is a little bit bigger than mine um, because that's because I was a parent for more months of 2017 than you were. It's not uncommon for mine to be bigger. That's uh, oh, listen to him. Listen That's to right. him. That's the old magic. All right. <laughs> so um, it's good to be back. Yeah. It is. So anyway, let's talk a little bit about uh, what we played in 2017, and then we'll uh, we'll kind of work our way through there. But uh, just at the top of your list, you know, when I when I ask you, what did you play in 2017? What kind of springs to mind? Well, obviously, the stuff that's going to spring to mind is the most recent stuff. Uh, you know, a- as per usual, 2017 uh, contained a Rocktober. Um, True enough. And, and, a, and an early November. And so those games are, I actually went a little crazy. Um, so, uh, you know, for the listeners, Brent, I-, I think a lot of people know because I actually posted about it on the website, but I, w- my wife and I had our first child. Yeah. Uh, as you well know, a little girl named Jones. Yeah, uh, as in Indiana Jones, a little girl named Jones. Um, and, uh, she, she came to us November 19th of this year. So I actually got to play games this year. Next year's show might look very, very different for the, for you and I, but, yeah. um, so in, in anticipation of that, uh, I went hog wild during October yeah. and I essentially bought every game that I wanted to play with the exception of South Park. So I bought, uh, at launch destiny Two, shadow of war, Assassin's Creed origins and Wolfenstein two. Nice. All of them in October. How many? And I played all of them. Well, that's what I was going to say. How many did you play? I'm glad you. So I, I'm glad you splurged. I'm. I'm really am. I, I am too. Actually, I. I, I kind of hemmed and hawed about it, and I. I really was like had this idea in my head of getting my gaming in before she was born, um, and uh, and I actually did. So I, I actually played Wolfenstein two to completion, um, the story, uh, and then I played. You know, I must have played. 30 hours each of Destiny, Shadow of War, and um, uh, and Assassin's Creed Origins, none of which I finished yeah. of those three, so, but I mean, all yeah, of which... That's, that's solid playtime. Yeah, all of which I feel like I'm more than I got my money's worth on those games. Uh, and and I enjoyed all of... All four of those games were fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, and, and we can talk in more detail about some of them, but um, yeah, so those those are the first things that popped to my mind, but other... There's uh, 2017 was a big year, Brent. Uh, it was. Th- th- there were a lot of really good games. Um, I agree. I played the shit out of PUBG. Um, I really, I'm really curious about PUBG. I've not played it, but uh, boy, it sounds fun. You know, this is one of those games, Brent. I have no doubt. So we're going to talk about s- some of these games. I, I played the crap out of uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands. We'll talk about. Um, I played uh, a lot of 
Rainbow Six Siege this year. I played a lot of um, Siege too. And I didn't come to Rainbow Six Siege until this year, yeah. two years after it came out. And you and I kind of, like, I didn't come to the Division until a year after it came out. Yeah. Um, I have a feeling that, that uh, PUBG is going to be a game that when you, you're going to come to it, and you're going to get obsessed with it the way that I was. You're just yeah. going to, you're going to, I just know this game is right up your alley. I, uh, you know, everything that I've read about it, and, and I, I know people that play it and, you know, have talked about it, and it does, it sounds, it sounds so, so fun. I just, I love the, um, I don't know. I, I just love sort of the intent of the game, and and I, I love some of the stories I hear. It's a little bit like, uh, like hearing about DayZ back in the day, and you know, it's just like, oh, you know, we did this, and then this happened, and then you know, we did this, and that. Uh, I don't know, just that that focus on on gameplay and and the interesting things that happen during a during a match and everything. It sounds fascinating to me. It is. I mean, it is very similar to DayZ. It's unlike. Any game you've played before? Now I know. I know you played um, Fortnite. I did. Yeah. Did you play the? Um, did you play the 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 PUBG Battle Royale? No, I didn't. Actually, we played. <clears throat> pardon me. We played Fortnite uh, actually in early access or whatever. Like we played it prior to that mode becoming available. I mean, you know, we we played it yeah, for, right. for a month or so prior to that. Right. And we okay, so of, you haven't experienced that PUBG. No, we kind of moved on at the point that 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 came out. Yeah, so it, it is like really similar to uh to Daisy in that sense that it is extremely unique. Yeah. Uh and like just super intense and the kind of thing that you talk about that you call your buddy the next day and you're like, Oh man, I was thinking about all night last night. We got killed. We were third. We were so close. We were third. We almost won. And it just it, it's just we lost and it's, it but, at the end. But it's built on this like you know the art, the the graphics are terrible. Everything clips through everything. It was in early. It came out early access, like yeah. three weeks ago at this point, time of this recording. Um, but it, it was, I mean, just absolutely the the most multiplayer fun I had this year, unquestionably. Yeah, you know, multiplayer fun is the name of the game for me because um, I, I and I think as I've talked about it, you know, in recent shows, starting with the division, which I guess would have been March eighth of twenty sixteen. Um, when that came out i think so i think, I think uh, uh, neil was we were talking about the other day and i think neil looked it up but in the vicinity i want to say yeah. of march 8 2016 i've become almost exclusively you know an online multiplayer kind of gamer um yeah i've never consistently had that prior uh you know i've never been able to kind of keep like a game group together and you know everybody play one game and stay focused on one game and just play it and play it and play it consistently until then until the division came out and i i started palling around with with uh neil uh lance and fett uh and so i I, like i I guess the uniqueness of that and the thing is that you know that i feel i feel that you know it's it's got a a a a time limit on it It, it's it's going to run out eventually because at some point i'm going to get a different job that requires me to work nine to five hours or something in that vicinity. And then I will lose the ability to mess up. Yeah. yeah, I will lose the ability to play with the guys when I do play with them. And so it's definitely, I mean, you know, I used to play a lot of multiplayer and, and since I've moved to the East coast and I'm working a nine to five job, yeah, I play way, way less because my buddies are two hours behind me an hour or two hours behind me. Yeah. And so they want to start playing around nine o'clock my time and I get up at 5 a.m. And so I, I can't play till midnight. I was doing it for a while and I was just dog tired all the time. And so just because of that scheduling, yeah, I, I play less and I miss it a lot. I actually just, I called, I called Aaron like a week ago or so. And I was like, dude, I miss these play sessions. Where are they? You yeah. Know? I know. Well, I, I don't know exactly how you feel, but I guess that I'm anticipating that. I, yeah, right. I know that when it happens, I'm going to miss it. And so my attitude has kind of become, look, the, you know, these single player games will always be here and I can go and play these at any time. And, and one of these days, when my job sort of knocks me out of the ability to play multiplayer, that's when I can go back and play these games. But for right now, while I have it, I'm going to really focus on doing this multiplayer thing that I've kind of wanted to have my whole life and only really now in the last few years have had it. So as a result of that, there's a ton of games that I have just you know, passed on in favor of, of playing things like Fortnite, uh, playing things like uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands, Rainbow Six Siege, some of these other multiplayer yep. titles that are on our list here. Um, I will say that for me, as far as like 2017, 
and playing things recently, the game, the game for 2017 and me is Divinity Original Sin 2. This thing really? is fucking incredible. You know, PC Gamer gave uh, gave this their game of the year and well deserved, in my opinion. Um, really, they didn't give it to Zelda: Breath of the Wild, even though it's PC Gamer, because it seems like <laughs> everybody everybody's game of the year is Zelda: Return to Zelda Land: Breath of the Wild or whatever. I hear I hear Breath of the Wild's really good. I'll look forward to checking it out one of these days. But for me and for my sort of classic RPG sensibilities. Divinity Original Sin 2 has just uh, it's pressed all my buttons in just the right order. Uh, I fucking love this game, man. It, it is a for those of you who have never played anything like this, I'm trying to think what it can what to compare it to. I guess like maybe like a Baldur's Gate kind of thing. It's uh it's sort of a, a you know top down isometric sort of uh, RPG. It's turn based combat, and it's got you know this very uh, you know deep sort of RPG sort of story. You go off on this huge journey of discovery. You become more powerful, and you know you you delve into dungeons. You you try to get loot and all of this stuff. All the classic elements that you'd expect in an RPG. The difference is that this game is four player co op from beginning to end, and so being able to play through that sort of classic RPG paradigm, but in co op online with friends. It's blown my mind. I, I I love this game so much. The combat is so dense. The, the the mechanics of the combat, I mean, are so dense. The ability to the ability to to learn skills and to really, you know, kind of structure your character any way that you want to to learn the abilities that you want to, and finding how those things can work with each other. Finding ways to set up things, you know, with your character was like, okay, well, I can use this skill and then i can use this skill and then i can use this attack and those things you know kind of chain together to create interesting effects and then finding a way to do that with multiple characters so that you know i'm saying like all right well what i'll do is i'll attack this guy with this particular weapon and then that will set him up for this ability that lance has and then alpaca can come in and he can you know apply some some uh, surface effect or whatever, and then that opens up Neil's ability to summon some creature, and you know now we're just gonna fuck them in the ass. So just <laughs> that that ability to kind of strategize, that that ability to do like this kind of neat tactical sort of turn based combat, yeah, with friends has just been amazing. That is, did you play the original Divinity Original Sin? Just a little bit, just a little bit. I, I did not, uh, I did not play it much. Did, did you not? Because I play I, I, this th- these kind of game. This kind of I didn't play Divinity Original Sin two. Yeah, and this kind of game wouldn't typically be in my wheelhouse. And I tried to play Divinity Original Sin because huh. it was so highly regarded. Yeah, a- and I a- and I, I I I could understand why it was good, but it wasn't grabbing me. And so I I played it for maybe two hours, three hours. Yeah, that was me. Total. Mm-hmm. A- and so I'm cu- I was curious if you played the first one and if no if um. The first, was the first one co-op or no? Mm, I I'm trying to remember now. I almost want to say it was two player co-op, but I think it was. Yeah, I, I don't. I, it was not four player, uh, yeah. to my knowledge. But I can't remember. And I have to say that the four player co-op was a big, big part of what. I, actually, no, I'll tell you what got me into this. I, I, like I was aware of Divinity Original Sin too. Like I knew that they had had a Kickstarter and it had been successful, and you know. But it was just it was just a story in the news to me. It wasn't anything I was invested in. Right. Yeah. And then I think it was Neil. He sent me a link to their one of their Kickstarter videos, like maybe video 36 or something like that. But it was the video where they laid out for the first time and really kind of showed you Game Master Mode, where you could basically play Divinity Original Sin 2 as if it were Dungeons & Dragons. You'd have one person acting mm-hmm. as a Game Master, and that person was sort of taking what normally would be the AI in the, in the game. That person was controlling or or at least setting up like the monsters to be encountered they were guiding the part like they were taking on the role of the narrator which there yeah. isn't there's a narrator in the game they're taking on the role of the narrator they're taking kind of the role of the monsters and there's four players who are now playing through some adventure with the game master leading them along saying like okay you've been on the trail for several days now you've been hired by such and such to deliver you know this to here and along the way you find a uh, you find an overturned wagon it looks like it's been attacked there's you know there's bodies everywhere what do you do and you're pl- like you're doing this in the video game 
You know, you're controlling your character in the video game, and you might, you know, decide to walk off into the forest over here, and the game master has set up some enemies. You know, there's an enemy encounter in that forest. Mm -hmm. And so, but showing this happening and showing like how quickly you can improvise, like, you know, like they're doing a session. It's a, it's a long story, but anyway, they're, they're doing a session and like the players come up with some crazy idea of like, you know, rather than attack these goblins, I want to try and, I want to try and talk to them. I want to try and persuade them that, uh, that, you know, we're like mercenaries and we're here to see their boss and, you know, it's okay for us to come into their goblin cave and like, you can roll dice as you would in Dungeons and Dragons. And the game master's like, okay, we'll roll for it. And the guy rolls like a, like a fucking 20, which is the theoretical maximum in this case. And he's like, okay, give me one second. And he instantly like turns the goblin cave from a series of combat encounters. He turns all of it off and they walk through the cave. He starts kind of role playing this one goblin. They're like walking through the cave and the the other goblins (laughs) are looking at you and they're like, what the fuck is this? And the goblin with you is like, oh, no, they're cool. They're mercenaries. They're here to see the guy. You know, they're here to see the boss. And it's like, it just becomes like this whole narrative that just spontaneously occurs. Seeing that happen within a video game was yeah. so exciting. I'm like, dude, I've got to play. Like, I, this is amazing. And so that's what originally got me into DOS 2. That's really interesting. That's, that's really interesting. It's mind-blowing. Com- it's yeah, mind-blowing. I was completely unaware of that aspect of that game. I so was you've been too. playing... So you played a ton of that. Yeah, 130 is that, hours. Is that your most played game? Probably. Uh, yeah. Although, I don't know. Now, I've got to think about that a little because early in the year, Ghost Recon Wildlands. Uh, yep. <laughs> we put I put a time. lot. So let's talk about Ghost Recon Ugh, Wildlands. First of all, talk did, about you, it. did you finish it? Yeah, I finished the campaign. I've, I, We're working on the DLC. Like we're doing Fallen Ghosts. I don't really care yeah. for the... What was the first DLC that came out? The Narco the, Road? The, yeah. Uh, I don't with the, give with the with the like ramps and yeah I don't give a shit it was about like Road. a vehicle based DLC essentially you know, I mean like to me it felt like they were trying to like let's put some Saints Row into into Ghost Recon Wildlands and I'm like yeah hey, right and well that sounds fun but the the, the execution yeah so one of the so one of the things about Ghost Recon Wildlands that I like so much was the this is this is going to be the wrong word but the, I was going to say realism but not not <laughs> it's not it's obviously not realistic I know what you mean but 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 um it it, it 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 walks that line of video games where it feels realistic, even though you know the weapons are totally unrealistic. And the, no, you know, it's, that it's, sort of thing. I don't think it's realism, but there is some sort of like there's some sort of like um, truth or it's something grounded like that. in reality. Yeah, the, the, exactly. The game. Whereas has, when you introduce that sort of like Saints Row aspect, right, it becomes cartoonish. Exactly. But prior to that, there, the game has a certain verisimilitude, some sort of quality that feels truthful and, and, and just allows you to, I don't know, to really invest in sort of the, um, not necessarily the narrative, but invest in the experience. So dude, we'll, I, I do want to talk later on about Assassin's Creed origins. And the reason mm-hmm. I mentioned that is because I have to say, we talked about this last year, I think in the 2016 game of the year. Yeah. Um, so, so Ghost Recon Wildlands was a, a UB game. Dude, um, I, which which is about all I've played in recent memory. Well, this is what I'm saying. So, uh, it, uh, as, as of course was the division. Yeah. Um, Assassin's Creed Origins is a UB game. Mm-hmm. Um, Rainbow Six and, Siege and is a UB game. Rainbow Six Siege is, is a newbie game, but it doesn't follow the same um, pattern as those other games. Which yeah, are essentially it's, it's these, not an open world game. Right, they're these right. open world games with missions or whatever, and and they uh, they continue to nail it. And and Ghost Recon was like this, just. Uh, First of all, it was an unbelievably gorgeous game. Yes, as is Assassin's Creed Origins. Both unbelievably gorgeous games. Yeah. Um, but and but Ghost Recon did such a good job, in my opinion, with between the. I know people people didn't like a lot a lot of the vehicle handling, particularly the cars. But I thought the vehicles were great, and the helicopters, the helicopters, and the flying through a sunset, and mm-hmm. the the sniper rifles, the way the weapons handled, yep, uh, was done so well in that game. The entire thing could be played in co op. Yep, you and I played a little bit together. Yep, I played. Uh, I know I played. I think forty hours of that game in co op. I can only imagine. I probably played another sixty or seventy in single player, and. And and absolutely freaking love both of them. Yep. Um, it's, and I never, I maybe finished half of the campaign, dude. Just so you know, like, oh really? Yeah, I put like a hundred probably hours in that game. I'm guessing it's really weird. UB just shows you your co-op time, not your total time yeah, for yeah, that yeah. game, but uh, or at least on the front page. But um, 
and I maybe finished half the game, but there's just something about the, 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 the combination of the incredible beauty and vistas along with the way the weapons handled. Um, I, I think they could have done the loot system better. Um, yeah. I, I was able to get, you know, what ended up being, and, and actually this has kind of happened in Assassin's Creed too. Assassin's Creed also, I should say, um, is I was able to get some of the best weapons pretty early on in the game. Right. Which I appreciate that they didn't want to like lock it off behind the story or whatever, but in doing so, it, it sort of uh, negates the entire looting aspect of the game, right? No, I, I, I agree. I mean, I also, like early on, I kind of figured out that, you know, even though my character is not leveled up all that much, I haven't, you know, invested as many skill points and all of these abilities and things. I figured out pretty early on that, you know, I could sneak into a, like a really difficult territory, like a five skull territory. Right. That's you know? right. Where the best sniper where, rifle where is the located. best stuff is like, I could get in there and I could stealth my way in and solo and unlock those, you know, and get those weapons yep. and get out without, uh, without causing too much of a fracas. And, you know, I mean, that's the thing. Like once you get the, uh, I'm trying to remember what's that, um, what's that big 50 cal sniper rifle, the one that you can explode cars with. The M M uh I can't wow, re- I can't it? remember, you know, yeah, what yeah. It, it's basically like a Barrett Light fifty, you know. I mean yeah. it's basically like a Barrett fifty cal sniper rifle. Once you get that, once you get the uh the MK two forty nine LMG, um I mean you can really and like at that like at that point suddenly them calling in a helicopter gunship is cause for laughter. <laughs> Look, they called in a helicopter. Yeah, I'll just one shot that. <laughs> yeah. You know, and down it comes. It just it completely changes the dynamic of the game. Um, but I, I love it. I mean, to me, the thing that I love about the game is it's the closest experience I've had so far to sort of like co-op Metal Gear, like that ability. And and specifically, I'm thinking of like Metal Gear Solid Five. Um, where you know there's this open ended kind of sandbox, you can attack whatever the mission is in any way you want to, but you can do it with friends. You know, so you yep. gotta you gotta go into a compound. You've got to interrogate a witness. You might have to extract a you know a prisoner or something like that, and you can sit there and say, okay, here's the road coming in. We know that you know backup vehicles will be coming this way. We can plant mines. We can put a person with an LMG on the road to just suppress reinforcements. Uh, we can have a sniper here to provide overwatch and, uh, and covering fire. We can have two people, you know, one coming in this way, one coming in this way, supporting each other, you know, figuring out those kinds of strategies and then putting them into play. And, you know, and they often fall apart, but when they don't, when it comes off exactly the way that you want it to, like when you control the encounter, and make everything happen the way that you want it to. It is the best feeling in the world. It, it really it was. It is the o- the only other thing about that game would have been mission variety. I I, um, I totally agree. Totally agree. But that's um, the thing. I mean, to me, the sequel to this game has the potential to be, you know, like world changing. The sequel to this game could be amazing. Yeah, I, 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 I Ubi's killing it in my eyes. I mean, I totally, totally enjoyed I, that. Game. I know, and the thing, like, I can't figure out how, like, how the fuck did Ubisoft turn into like my favorite game developer but I know. And it, and it's not <laughs> and it makes you feel dirty doesn't it well it does like like i don't consciously love ubisoft and yet i keep playing their fucking games i know i just can't get out of it dude do the same thing with assassin's creed some of the guys on outlaws said like lauren you do this every time man you say you're not going to get it you don't want to you get creed. it you end up buying it you don't finish it blah 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 so I, I will this is a good opportunity just real quick to talk about assassin's creed origins yeah please do because uh, i've heard good things <laughs> I fucking love it, dude. I am absolutely loving that game. It is not perfect. Uh, there are certainly issues with it, but yeah. it's it's absolutely beautiful. It's it's an it's a um, I enjoy the story. I enjoy the protagonist. They still have the stupid. I, I've always thought the Assassin's Creed series has uh, terrible character animation, facial animations, uh-huh. uh, character models. Actually, I should say, but um, uh, it, it 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 it's Wildlands, but in Egypt. They changed the combat. Um, the combat is, is better than it was. I wish they would have gone more in the Batman Shadow of War mm-hmm. um, uh, direction and just done it well. Instead, they went more into the um, uh, oh, what the fuck, the From what? Software games. Oh, I don't know. I was gonna say Watch Dogs. I didn't know where you're going. No, no, the From Software, Dar- um, Dark Souls, like okay, ish. Right. I mean, ish, where you're like 
you you know you you're fighting a guy and you got to you hit him once or twice and you got to back off and let him swing at you and you got to dodge and figure out the timing and it's a little more like that which is fine it's it's not as good as dark souls uh, or or is it's not as brutal or deadly as dark souls is and it's certainly the the penalty is nowhere near which makes it less tense yeah um but it's better than it was um okay but uh, uh I, the world is just absolutely gorgeous it's it, it's huge it's varied i've taken Something like two hundred. That's got a f- built-in photo mode. If you've seen on the website, um, um, is it Uncle Dude that's been going crazy? I think it's Uncle Dude that's been going crazy with the, <laughs> with the, um, with the photo mode. And I've taken probably two hundred screenshots at this point, and I'm, you know, again, not even halfway through the game. It's uh, what you can see if you go to my Steam account. It, it's just, uh, it, it, it is an Ubi game through and through, in the biggest setting they've ever made, bigger than Wildlands, I think. Uh, which is or, or, which is saying something. It is, or, or maybe it's not. I don't Wild know. But it's the biggest is a big ass- game. It's the biggest Assassin's Creed. It is a continuous environment. There's no loading. It's uh, unbelievably beautiful, uh, and I'm I'm totally totally enjoying it, dude. Well, that's that's awesome to hear because yeah. it de- it definitely looks good. I love the setting for this one. I I, I think you know going to Egypt was just a, I mean a fantastic idea. You know what an amazing sort of culture to explore in terms of you know just yep. everything you know architecture and uh political sensibilities like everything about that sounds like an awesome idea um you know what i the one thing i do i want to call out in that game that i think is one of the best settings i've ever seen yeah is uh in the in the settings they give you the option to decide whether or not you so so it's set up like like most games like that uh so actually not like old assassin's creed games but most other games like this where um you know, the different areas have different level. You you level up your guy, so there's a whole new leveling system. And you might be a level 7, and if you go into a, an area where there's level 23 guys, you're screwed, right? Like, yeah. So the air, each area has certain level guys, but eventually you become a level 20, and you go back to the areas that have 7s and 8s, and you're just, like, cutting through them like they're butter. Yeah. Well, there's a setting in the settings where you can um, automatically have all characters level up to near your 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 levels. To so it keeps the challenge high That's everywhere. exactly right. Yeah. And, th- and and not everybody wants that. Some people like to be able to go back and and cut through an area just because it's fun and don't or, or if they have to go back, you know, because they want they left something in a in a storage there. They don't want to have to like really fight for it. Right. But um, I immediately turned it on and it made the game so much more fun because everybody's within one level of me. There may there may be people that are way above my level, mm. but there's nobody who's more than one level below me, and so it makes the game uh, it keeps that level of challenge um, a- a- even instead of having me, you know, just dispatch these characters really easily it's quite nice i thought it was a brilliant setting and i don't think i've ever seen that in another game that's a good idea for sure yeah i thought it was awesome so uh-uh. i'm totally enjoying assassin's creed origins absolutely highly recommend it um i will say brent i'll just hit a, a couple of the other ones at, from the end of the year here please shadow of war is was fantastic i'm only oh yeah 60 percent through that game oh, but man. it is could not be more fucking addictive um love that first one it's it's, it's it's fantastic. Order. I absolutely when when you get the time in your gaming schedule, and it's on sale on Steam, even if it's not on sale, it's worth it. But yeah. you know, totally fun. Destiny two, um, <laughs> Destiny two is a game. Destiny is a game that I play alone, <laughs> which is not how Destiny is meant to be. I played. was going to say that seems counterintuitive. It is, but um, I, I totally enjoyed it. The people that I think have had issues with that are the people that are really hardcore into the to the more MMO aspects of it and are really concerned about the end game. And I get it and it's broken and I totally get it. And the loot boxes and blah, 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 blah. But, um, uh, I, I played it single player and totally enjoying it. Single player. It's a beautiful game. The shooting feels really great. Um, and then Wolfenstein too, I'll just say really quick. Um, uh, just phenomenal. I, I cannot recommend it enough. Yeah. I've heard just as good as the but, original, nothing but yep. praise for it. Just as good as the original Wolfenstein, the the writing, the characters are are absolutely spot on and just as good with more new, interesting characters. And there's some, there's more, there's end game content. So when you're done, there's actually more to do. Right. Um, which is fantastic. Always and, a good thing. Um, I I love loved the first one. Absolutely loved uh, Wolfenstein too as well. Well, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about things that we didn't play, but maybe we wanted to. Maybe we did. So, but maybe we did. Brent, we before you get to that, those. before you jump to that, because yeah. I, I want to, there's one other game I have to mention. Oh, sorry, go ahead. That, that, no, that was a total surprise to me, and I, and I really, really want to mention it. And if, I don't know if you played it or not. That's near Automata. No, I, I'm not. 
I've not played it. Near, near, I don't know. I can't remember what it was that got me to buy it. It's a, it's a Japanese game, yeah. and it is was the most surprising game of 2017 to me, and I highly recommend checking it out. Um, it, it's got an aesthetic and a sensibility that I'm just not used to because I don't play a lot of JRPGs, it's, and, and, and I don't play a lot of games from Japan in general. Right. Um, not for any reason. It's just they don't tend to strike me. Um, but really enjoyed Near Automata, and I want to bring that up as a game that people should check out. Now I want to go back and play all these games too. <laughs> uh, okay, so you were saying games, games that were, were we doing games that that we didn't play but wanted to, or games that we didn't play and didn't want to? Oh, I don't know. I mean, because you know, there, some some of these, it's a it's a gray line. You know, it's a thin line between fries and shake with a few of these. That's true. You're um, right. um, but let's start with because I just think it's an interesting thing to discuss in light of 2017. Let's talk a little bit about Star Wars Battlefront Two because. Oh, that yeah, game, let's do. that game caught some headlines last year. Yeah, neither one of us played it. No, I didn't. But did you play the Did you play the demo? I did not. But uh, my brother's got it on Xbox, and he got it for Christmas. And um, I, I'm really intrigued. Like you know, like talking to him about it, seeing gameplay. Um, I, I have to say that it, it's like originally I'm just like no interest at all. Don't care. I was vaguely interested when it was coming out. I talked to you know the other guys that I, I play with. I'm like, hey, what do we think about Battlefront Two? Would we want to? Would we want to maybe jump on that? And I can't remember who it might have been Neil, but one of them was just you know like no, not interested at all. And I was like, okay, yeah, that's fine, you know. So not gonna put, not gonna press the point. If if all four of us don't want to play it, there's no point. Right. So I kind of let it go at that point, but. Um, I don't know. I, I I have to say I'm intrigued by it. Like it sounds like in terms of gameplay, there might be some interesting stuff going on here. Um, but I just think that it's completely over. It's been completely overshadowed by the controversy with uh, the loot boxes and the enormous sort of uh, PR problem that EA had uh, with this game. Yeah, I honestly don't even remember if. So I did play the demo. Uh, and it was the game was beautiful and it played well and I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was just one. I only played it was one map, one map, one mode of the multiplayer. Okay. Um, I, I don't even remember if I've heard anything about the quality of the single player. If people liked it or not, the story of you know you're playing as part of the empire, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I I've not really heard a lot of people talk about the single player either. Like most yeah. everybody that I've kind of talked to about it that has liked it, like it's just been multiplayer. They've been telling me about. Y- yeah, but I mean, I remember going into it. We thought that they were going to have a pretty decent, solid single player, but yeah, um, and maybe they do. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, and I don't. I don't know. Um, and and I guess with the the multiplayer, uh, you know, the thing with it is, it's just apparently is so broken because uh, in the way that they have basically hamstrung the ability to play the game based on loot boxes. Now I haven't I, I I wasn't following really, really closely, so I don't know all the ins and outs of it. Um, although I I knew probably more a couple months ago when it was more germane, but um yeah, I don't know why, man. It just wasn't it wasn't on my radar enough to make me really pay attention and get upset about all the shit that was going on. I mean I I'm upset about it in industry terms. Yeah. Um but not necessarily in Star Wars video game terms. Well, I, you know, honestly, what I was more upset about was that thirteen thirteen got canceled, <laughs> or, or or whatever the hell that other that, yeah. that the Amy the Amy Hennig game. Well, yeah, that uh, that game that was not thirteen thirteen. No, uh, I know it wasn't, but that yeah, whatever but, her. But the Amy Hennig game got canceled. The one this that, year. that Visceral was working on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was the one that I was really looking forward to, and I I, I have to agree with you. I was probably more upset about that than anything going on with with Battlefront, just because. I had already kind of figured out I wouldn't be playing Battlefront, and therefore yeah. I didn't. I didn't have uh, such. A, it wasn't such a personal sort of affront to me. But having said that, I do think it's significant in the sense that there have been a lot of things that you and I have talked about over the years, and certainly going back to the days of Epic Battle Axe. And I can't tell you how many tweets and things like that, like little messages that I got while the Battlefront Two controversy was going on people saying oh this is this is like the stuff you guys used to talk about epic battle axe i missed that show like i wish you guys were were still you know going strong and and talking about things like this because this is right up your alley and that's true we talked about a lot of industry shenanigan kinds of things on ebc back in the day and um i was just i was thinking about though a lot of the things we talked about at the time 
we were saying, look, if people want this to change, then you know they've got to do something. Like they have got to, they've got to start not you know holding these companies accountable, not buying these games. You it's know, the wallet. Yeah. You know, demanding. You know, say like, I'll buy your game when you stop trying to fuck me in the ass with it. And to see, and admittedly, you know, maybe perhaps not every game has the potential fan base of something like a Star Wars Battlefront two, but to see how much hot water ea got into with that game to see how many people were just clobbering them you know online on youtube and social media i mean you know when when controversy over video game practices starts making it to you know like cnn and fox news and you know oh absolutely apparently i mean they lost millions of dollars in stock prices it's just i mean it's amazing like how dramatic an effect Players Which then spilled over into, into Destiny 2 and Overwatch, and, yeah. and out, I'm not saying these ga- those games did it to themselves, but the but the the spotlight that's shown on EA for Battlefront 2 yeah. uh, was wide enough that it that it really is bringing a spotlight to these other games too. It's really it's it's absolutely fucking incredible, and I hope they're actually um, you know there's conversations out there about um, you know if this is gambling and if this is if it's legal. Yeah, and I tell you what, that's that's something that EA EA does not want to go down that path because, man, that is just, I mean, they will, their, their legal team, their, their legal team will just officially start taking 50% of their profits. If they find themselves in a position of being, uh, of being investigated as and potentially regulated as a gambling entity, you know, forget it, forget it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was, it was an incredible story. I would say that probably, that was probably the biggest story of 2017 in gaming. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, yep. It's um, it's amazing just, you know, like what, you know, how the outcome sort of played out over the course of, you know, however many weeks and everything. But but also, but also, I think that the, the last thing that I kind of want to talk about in relation to that story is the rumors that were flying, especially uh, like at the tail end, like after they had begun capitulating, after they had, had put out there like, okay, so, you know, here's what we're going to do. We're going to like eliminate this aspect of you know the in-game stuff like you know we're not going to be doing the i can't remember what you know, like the diamonds or whatever like you were going to be buying in-game currency with money and th- they had they had turned that off and all this stuff but there were there were several several news sites including i i, I want to say variety even reported that um that there were there were sources unnamed sources inside of disney that were basically saying that the Disney high ups came down really hard on EA. Like, you know, what the fuck is going on over there? And that, you know, there were rumors that, you know, the Disney was talking about whether or not a video game partnership with EA was going to work out in the long term. And, um, you know, I don't know. I haven't heard any, I haven't heard any update on that story. I don't know if things have cooled off at this point or whatever, but I have to say that I feel like, the thing that needs to happen and and maybe, maybe it will, maybe there's, maybe there is enough stink left on this story for it to happen. But I think what desperately needs to happen is for Disney to, uh, to end this whole sort of exclusive star Wars video game partnership with EA thing. Yeah. That's gotta go. That's got to go away. Yeah. I mean, because between battlefront two and canceling, you know, what I'm sure is not, just for you and I, a very anticipated game, this Amy Hennig uh, Star Wars game that EA trashed because it, you know, there's not enough loot box multiplayer mechanics or whatever. Um, I'm sure you and I aren't the only people missing out on that. Uh, I, I think that I think that Disney's got to understand that uh, that they handed the golden goose to EA and EA fucked it. Yeah, big time. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be interesting. I mean, EA, like I said, took a huge loss for that. And I'm sure Disney doesn't want to risk that that kind of no uh, attention towards their property for sure fucking um, reconstitute lucas arts reconstitute fucking yeah, lucas arts and um, just oh lucas oh, come on um so brent what uh, another game i just really quickly want to mention that just sort of quietly i mean i feel like just almost didn't even exist which is super unfortunate is mass effect andromeda oh uh, same for me uh, i mean that wasn't even on my radar uh, no, no and it's kind of a bummer because it's such a a, a revered series true that it's it's sad that that's the case, except for the 
What, what was the story? There was some story around Mass Effect. Was it the was it the shitty um, facial animations or something? I can't remember. There was yeah, um, there, there was some there was some controversy surrounding that, wasn't there? Uh, yeah, but it is a game that just went by in 2017. Yeah. But uh, there were games that that uh, I didn't play that I wanted to play that didn't make the cut. I'm sure. surprised that on that list, there's one game on that list. I'm surprised is on that list, and that is South Park: The Fractured But Whole. I feel exactly the same way. I'm like, how? Like, I didn't play it, but how did I not play it? Like, because yep. I love the stick of truth. Oh my god, do I so love it so much? I know, but I, I, I guess it really. I guess I just really adhered to like my whole philosophy of single player later, multiplayer now. Um, because I was just. I mean, like, I don't have time. I mean, like, I like the two hours a day that I play with the guys. That is my two hours of gaming per day. Like, I just don't have time outside of that to do anything. So, even. It, even that's a decent amount of time. No, I, um, I'm, me, very, I'm very thankful to have it. For me, it was, um, you know, it came out in the same time frame as those other four games I bought, Assassin's Creed True. and Wolfenstein. And yeah, that was sort of the uh, October window, wasn't it? Yeah, right. And I just, like, I couldn't do another one. But uh, So that's the one that I'm surprised is on this list. There, but there were a few other games that I'd like to check out that, I, you know, I just couldn't because there were too many goddamn good games this year, which is a great place to be. True. Um, I don't know if any of these interest you, but Evil Within 2... Um, Resident Evil Seven. I heard Prey. some interesting things about Resident Evil Seven. I, I've heard some people say that was really good. It was extremely, extremely well received. Yeah. Um, Prey. I, I, at some point, I'd like to play. I think I don't know. I, I, you know. I asked about it on the website. People said it's very similar to Dishonored, which is a game I didn't like. But, yeah. Um. So I don't know about that. Injustice Two. Um. I really like to play. For me, fighting games are um sort of low on my list but i really enjoyed injustice and so when that game comes down in price that's when i'll pick that up right um so th- those were some of the games that you know i kind of wish i kind of d- i wanted to play but but didn't get to um but overall brent i you know 2017 was uh, if you in my mind a hell of a year in gaming i agree I'll, although i only played a small slice of it yep. um the the slice of- think of all the games you have in the future when they go on sale that's true the, the, there's not a single game even though I only played a few, there's not a single game I played this year that I was let down by. You know, I, I, I managed to play just a handful of games, but they were all amazing for different reasons. You know, I don't think, I think that's true for me too. I don't think there was a game that I was let down by. There was nothing that I played that I was just underwhelmed by. And so that I'm very thankful for that, but you know, there's a huge backlog for me this year. There's a huge list of things that I can't wait to get go back and play south park is probably at the top of that list but there's a ton of other things wolfenstein 2 horizon zero dawn shadow of war um probably fucking legend of zelda breath of the wild i I mean i can't tell you i came this close to getting a nintendo switch uh yeah you know it very nearly happened and in the end (laughs) i i decided to hold off a little bit longer but um i you know fucking i can't tell you the number of people that have told me man mario odyssey is amazing and that do that mario rabbits game that that uh, that turn-based sort of XCOM style uh mario rabbits game oh yeah i vaguely know i vaguely know what you're dude, talking about amazing like I, I like i've watched i can't tell you the number of uh of youtube stuff i've watched on that people talking about people playing it looks fantastic so the switch, I gotta say, somebody stuff. brought one of my nephews brought one over for Christmas. He brought over the switch part of it or whatever, the, yeah. the mobile part. And it yeah. looks, it looks dope, dude. It I, was well. It's it looks like a well designed piece of hardware. Yeah, I was checking out my sister's over Christmas, and uh, I, I'm, I, I really think there's something to it. Every time we go into Best Buy, Z ends up gravitating over to that section, and you know the the little Joy Cons, they're they're really kind of perfect for her size yeah. hands. I mean, really, she can manipulate them very easily. And, uh, so I set her up with the, the Mario Odyssey demo and just, you know, she was just kind of like running around and jumping and having a great time. And I get to thinking about, gee, you know, if she can actually use this thing, you know, maybe, maybe there's something, uh, maybe something to that. And I ended up kind of going a different way, but we can talk about that later. The most amazing thing I saw was they, they had, he had the mobile there with the two joy cons and decided to play two player on the mobile tablet. So they each take one joy con. It was incredible. It was, I mean, I, it looks like a very well designed piece of well. Hardware. I mean, didn't the, I guess the news just came out this week that the Switch is officially the fastest selling console in the U.S. in history? Really? No, I did not know that. The fastest selling console. That's not the. When did it come out? Um, 
That's a good question. I can't, yeah, I'll have to look I can't it remember up. the release date. I'll look it up while um, we're talking here. All right, Brent. So so that's the year in 2017. You know, we're not doing like a game of the year type, like picking games of the year this year. I, there are a lot of great games, but um, let's talk just a little bit. And I hope it's not another 12 months or six months till E3 that we do another show. But I do want to. I, I do want to talk a little bit about um, what's coming up in 2018 because as amazing of a year in gaming as it was this year, if the games that are slated to come Next out in 2018 year. actually come out in 2018, um, <laughs> it Big could F. be even better. Um, it could be. By the way, uh, the, the Switch was uh, the Switch was uh, March 3rd, 2017. March, okay, so it was early in there. Just yeah, so you know, yeah. March 3rd. Um, uh, so this year, Brent, I, you know, I threw up a, a quick list here. This is certainly not all the games, and I'm sure not all these games will come out in 2018. Yeah. But unquestionably, uh, m- my most anticipated is Red Dead 2. I don't know if that's true for Top you of the well. list. Yeah. Top of the list. Followed uh, quickly there has, by God of War. The, so the, there has been a recent leak by, apparently, I don't know if you saw this, Brent, the, apparently the retailer who leaked the, was it the GTA release date or some major games release date that was accurate yeah. in Europe? leaked a june 8th release date for red dead redemption 2 i I did hear about that Uh, yeah so we'll see if that's true that that does follow right around the time frame they rockstar likes to release their games in may but um if that's true hopefully maybe we'll see some freaking media on this game uh sometime soon soon Soon, i would hope uh god of war is right is right there uh as well the new spider-man game i know man i know when I Looks picked fantastic. Up, when I picked up Spider-Man: Homecoming, there's a special feature on uh, on the the um, you know the Blu-ray for it. Yep. There's a special feature uh, that just talks about the uh, the new Spider-Man game, and it, it it kind of reminded me all over again how fucking excited I am to play that. It looks awesome. Anthem, uh, I think, is a game I'm interested in. I agree. Uh, I don't have. I'm not. I'm cautiously optimistic. I think it looks amazing. The one, but. the one that I'm cautiously optimistic on is Metal Gear Solid Survive. Are you? Yeah, it actually comes out soon, February 20th. It is. It's right around the corner. I, I, I don't know. Like the thing about it to me is, it feels a little gimmicky, but that's not to say it couldn't be good. That's not to say it couldn't be fun. Um, I'm, I, you know, I'm just trying to kind of remain neutral on it and see. See how I feel about it once I see some gameplay, and it's definitely got di- a different flavor mechanically speaking. Yeah, but it could uh, be good. The previous games, but it could be. It absolutely could be because it's it's an interesting universe, and so sure. I, I don't know. I actually was unaware of it until recently, and so I'm curious to look into it a little more deeply. But mm-hmm. um, other games coming out, Days Gone, which is that zombie one, uh, yeah, actually looks really good. I agree. That um, that was a cool. That was a cool. I think. Which was it? E three. It wasn't. Yep. Was it this year E3 that they showed that? I think that off? it was. Yeah, that was a I cool so. demo, though. Yeah. No, I, I, I um, agree. That looks good. The new game from the the people that brought us um, a Tale of Two Brothers. Um, yeah, a way out. Uh, a way out, which Dude. is this, it's a co op only game where two your two p- guys are trying to break out of a prison. Prison break the game. Come on, no brainer. Looks, looks really interesting. I uh, agree. You and I are both big fans of David Cage's work, unlike the rest of the world. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's true. It's true. So I'm I'm very much looking forward to Detroit Become no, Human. I, I can't wait. I, I mean, see again, and this this is the thing. I mean, you and I have talked about these concepts in gaming before. The idea, well, and you actually played. I can't remember what the name of it was, but that uh, that 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 movie, or the, the, you know, it's kind of like a B, you know, uh, movie, yeah, the horror movie, uh, um, horror flick, the the branching game what was it fucking the hell was that called was it until, dawn? Damn it. until dawn yeah yes. okay well, one, one of my favorite games of all time honestly like right. a really really good uh game but y- you and i have talked about you and i have talked about you know concept things like oh it would be amazing to have a video game that you know really does have this amazing branching story where every choice you make you know could dramatically affect the outcome of the game it could go in these different directions yep and to me, David Cage is a perfect match for that kind of thing because he does have such an intense interest in how video games can be used uh, as a as a narrative medium. Uh, I'm I, I can't wait to check it out. I can't. Yeah, wait you know, it. you know, I think one one of the things Until Dawn sort of out David Cage, David Cage a little bit, right? In the in the sense that it it, it came in and, and it just it was probably one of the most cinematic. And when I say cinematic, I mean felt most like a movie games i've ever played yeah uh, and really had that branching story and, and I, you know david cage tries to do a lot m- more with it he's trying to get and, and and i and uh i don't blame him for it he's trying to get more and deeper emotion 
It, you know, I think it was easier for them in the horror genre because they could be campy and they they weren't really trying to necessarily create. They're trying to create one emotion, fear or tension, yeah. not not you know emotion uh, along the lines of of sadness or or um, emotional investment. And David Cage also plays a lot more with controls and how they actually mimic or feel uh, like what you're doing in the game or bring you in some way into the game. Where yeah. Until Dawn didn't do that, um, but but uh, they're very very similar in that way. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to you know you and I love that kind of thing. I, I do. I, I'm I, and and just I mean the subject matter of the game is just it's interesting. You know, it's yep. it's a very interesting uh, sort of I don't know sort of uh, it's a very interesting world to step into. It is so. Um, Far Cry Five, another one. I'm not I'm not actually that interested in Far Cry Five. I'll wait and um, see. You know. Yeah, I'm not, but I think a lot of people will be. It looks like it has an incredibly high production value. Mm-hmm. Um, really 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 good production value I, I i'm just i think a lot of others will be interested in it. it's just that the subject matter is not of interest to me um yet another the, ubisoft game yep and then uh the new metro game also supposed to come out this year metro exodus right now i um, i'm not getting into the metro series the way that you have so that's i can't say that that one's officially on my radar have yet. you played the last one no i i haven't uh i haven't what was the last oh, one dude. was it uh was it Last Light? What Last was Light, it? yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't play yeah. Last Light. You got to play it, dude. It's so good. I've I've heard I've heard very good things. Uh so so 2018 looks to be shaping up to be a a pretty goddamn good year as well if not even maybe maybe even better than 2017. Uh and I dude, I got this Red Dead Redemption. That's I mean. I know, man. I know. I I can't wait. And I'm really trying to spend time with my daughter now. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to... I mean, honestly, like, Red Dead's one of those games that, you know, I'm like, hey, maybe it's time to get her into preschool. <laughs> imagine imagine <laughs> that they actually do the, the, the online component. I know. Uh, really well this time, unlike the first one, and they do it and treat it the way they've tre- treated GTA. Which is... Which would really, really be interesting, because, like, Grand Theft... I mean, to me, the story of GTA V is like GTA Online. Like, the... The incredible, although they have, you know, they haven't done single player DLC for GTA Five, which is definitely a break in the pattern for them, right? Um, but the fact that they have said rather than do single player DLC, we're just going to continue to support GTA Online and roll out new modes, new ex- you know, expand that. Um, the idea of them doing something like that with Red Dead Redemption to is very very intriguing. All you know. Having said that, I love the fucking DLC, the uh, the Undead Nightmare for uh, the first one. Absolutely. And I guess it, while we're on the subject of the first one, um, you know, do we do we even want to dare hope? Uh, uh, well, no. let, let me say this. No, don't There's, even say it out. Why would you even say? It? Why would you even say it? Um, I I have to say at this point, I I don't think that it's coming to PC. I don't no, think I don't that they're going to put out the first one on PC, but there's a part of me that wonders if they might not do a reissue of the first game for current generation consoles. I'm wondering if we might not see the first RDR come out like in a you know maybe like an HD remastered kind of thing for uh, for Xbox and and uh, PS4, Xbox One and PS4. I, I I don't know. All I all I can hope is that. Is that uh, RDR two is good enough that I don't care? Yeah, I, I, guess, I guess that would be the thing because I, I don't know, man. I mean, I don't. Uh, you know, I actually don't really have any way to play it right now. It's just occurred to me that you know, like I, that was my that I played that on Xbox, and I don't have an Xbox in the house anymore. So I guess it's one of those things. Either I have to buy it again for PS three, or I have to hope. That it uh it it does get reissued at some point, or that RDR two is so good I just don't care. It's hard to imagine not caring about Red Dead Redemption though. It really is. That's true. Soon enough, you'll be able to stream it to like your phone over that, LTE or something. That's true. Yeah, I'll, 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 in, you know, in VR or some some, some shit. That's exactly right. Um, um, all right, Brent. You want to call anything else? No, I think, man. I think that that brings us to the end of our annual show. Um, <laughs> No, it, hopefully not. Uh, I, I do hope that this it, we don't go another six months without doing it. I love doing the shows. I think that there might be a few people who still listen. Yeah. Uh, I guess we'll I guess we'll find out when we put this show out. Time, but yeah, time will tell. 
As always, it's great to talk to you about video games. I love it, man. Every time we do it, I love it. Yep. And that seems like a wrap on 2017, and we will talk to you guys some more later on in 2018. Don't forget, you don't stop playing because you get old. You get old because you stop playing. <laughs>